Welcome back. We are continuing the restoration of our 8-bit ASR32 teletype. In the previous episode, after we invited a few friends to make sure we had a continuous supply of broken teletypes, we started with ours that could not print anything sensible, unstuck a million misplaced control levers, recovered all of our bits, adjusted our print element, recovered line feed, and ended up with a respectable printing behavior and a successful first intergalactic transmission. That is, until our previously well-behaved keyboard started acting up. I'll do a dash. Oh, I won't do it either. But it's stuck at the red point. Huh. So it looks like I have two problems remaining. I have one uh, where that has to do with the print head that we'll address later. But I have one with a keyboard uh, where Occasionally, the shift and control don't work. Right now, that's what happens. Or sometimes I don't get space. So we have the joy of opening the keyboard. And before you do this, you have to prepare something to catch those plates because uh, once you remove the, the retainers on the plates, the plates sway out. And if they completely sway out, the keyboard goes flies in pieces. Okay, uh, Carl, I might want to have your fingers ready in case it plays. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I have, that's good. A little bit more and we have it. All right. There we go. Up. All right. And that's where we go up. Let me see if that works. Oh, yay. All right. So why is this stuck? Uh, okay, time to read the hieroglyphics again. Why am I in black and white all of a sudden? Carl, you're in black and white. You, you, look, you look very vintage. And the way this thing works, there are code bars and that move with the keys. And they push those plastic C levers at the end, which in the end push, so this one has one at each side, push little very flimsy contacts. And this is all very flimsy looking, but it's working, except the shift. Shift, somehow it's stuck. I can't figure out why. I haven't figured it out yet. And for the chuckle, here's the wiring of the contact is way more complicated than you think um, because this has parity and they do weird things for shift and control the invert bits. And actually Carl is just trying to debug his side and we just had the shift inverter not working. No, the shift inverter was working, see? Well, you made it work. It wasn't right. working before, right? And that tripped us for a while because it, it was a bit shift. But you got the controls not working, right? right? And then we can tell because we have the HP terminal and we don't get the control characters. All right, well, good luck with the contacts. Where I find out what's I have a mechanical problem. It just doesn't want to do it. I have to figure out what holds the bar. In the meantime, on my keyboard, we found what was binding, and. There's a broken piece of plastic. I remember seeing that one floating around at the beginning of the restoration right here. And it's just wedged itself. So, which is good. If we remove it, if we remove it, the bind is going to disappear, but then there's probably something broken. There we go. Yep. Okay, so that's Ah, no, no, you might be right. You might be right. right there. You might be right. This is this guy over here. Mm -hmm. And this is this little part that was on the keyboard. All right. And they had the problem on the other side where those broke off. They put screws. Famous for broken. And this, well, I have to do the same thing here. But let's see if my keyboard works again. That should work. Yes. Okay. So we can reassemble this. And we'll just need to add a little screw on my keyboard. And Cal just found his problem on the contact. He has a, a contact that's... This contact here is easy. missing its head that goes up into there. This one is too short. It's supposed to have a long, a long tail. 
that goes into the plastic to, part. Yeah, it's supposed to look like these, the right. tall ones. So that's why the control is not working. So either buy contact at Mr. RTTY or ban the new one. So here's the contact and I have to try to make a longer one with some wire here. It's not exactly spring wire, but maybe that will work. Okay, actually the part is more complicated than I thought. There's a double band over here. That I, that's the part that's cut off. So let's see if we can make this one work. That's our repair contact. It's this one right here. That's on Robert's um, teletype. Can you, can you wiggle the control button so I can see how that works? Uh, slow, 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 slow. There we go. So there are, there are two contacts that swap. It's an inverter, so one moves in, the other one moves out. Shift also works the same way. So we should have repair control. So now do me do me a G. Just a G should work now. Yeah. And now do a control G. And we have a beep. Alright, so we repair the control. Excellent. Yay! One more thing that works. So I had to grind the screw a little bit to make it the right size, but it's fixed. So I can put that back together. And the brake. So what we want to do then? Pop up, pop up, do things here. Okay. And here we go. So it looks like I've regressed some more A, B, C, D, E, and G that works. The numbers work. Sheet numbers don't work. Start from P. P. Shift doesn't work, then it's printing. Well, uh, yes. Right, it, it's not. And shift used shift. to work. So it didn't used to work for the number, it used to work for these ones. But now these ones, the comma prints L. So I can shift a few that respond to shift. These respond to shift, but the numbers don't. Uh, okay, so backtracking. Let's look on the terminal. Let me try to sure. do the, the commas. commas yes. So I'm encoding right. Here it is, yeah. Shift commas, that works. Yes. So I'm encoding right. By your number. And the, the numbers I can shift. Yes, so I have in both an encoding problem on the shift and a decoding problem. Yay! I was almost there. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like I have to do to go into the uh, the hieroglyphic schematic for the keyboard after all. And the shift wow. is this complicated thing when it swaps bit 5, replace 1 and it's a 0, and 0 when it's a 1. And Carl just saved me, because he has a better version of the schematic where you can actually understand what happens, is that when there is a shift, this, 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 this is make and this is break. But the gist of the idea is correct that they shift the bits and I can tell from my bit chart that the one I can invert is this one which is this bit 5, which I, I, I can turn a 0 into a 1 but I cannot invert a number a number to do this one so I cannot turn a 1 into a 0 so I should be able to trace that somewhere on the schematic Okay, so I found my shift problem. My, it's not in the shift actually. Those inverters were doing five. It's in bit five, and this little guy is went out of its slot when we when we we, we fix the keyboard. So now I should be able to do shift ones and get now I get A's. Okay, 
So that's a decoding problem. So I think I can do over here, it's a one and a shift one. Okay. So I'm repairing the keyboard but I'm decoding wrong. Okay, I have to find what's wrong with the decoder. Good news, bad news things, I actually have to remove the head. That's the bad news. The good news is that you'll see how it works. Right, so, and how, how much it rotates is determined by those three plates, which makes you a 4-bit into 16 position demultiplexer. Mechanical. You would have asked me how to do it, I couldn't. <laughs>